Wow. That is awesome. What a great looking crowd. Hey, welcome along to Footy Fanatics. That's good footy panel show. We're at the Burvale Hotel here in Nutter Wadding tonight. We've got two, two players from the Melbourne Football Club. They're at the back there. We've just been having a little bit of a shits and giggles and they're ready to come out here and do that with you now. So this is the only live and interactive footy panel show going around in Australia. This is where the fans meet the players and the players meet the fans. You kids down the front getting excited about that. What about you two boys? You're all into it? Uh, yeah, Dad said I could. Enjoy yourselves tonight. That's what we want from you. There's some pretty serious footy panel shows out there and you should know by now that this is not one of them. So let's get stuck into it. Please welcome to the show our first panellist. He has played a total of 57 games and he's kicked 21 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2016. He wears the number 13 on his back. I read your lips, ma'am. Well done. Please welcome to the stage, Clayton Oliver. It's a grand old flag. It's a high-flying flag. It's the emblem. There you go. Ex Clary. Huh? I'm allowed to call you Clary, am I? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, good, good. We'll get that out. Well, you know that guy down the front. We'll try to ignore yeah, that. Actually. Yeah, we'll leave that one alone. Um, our second <laughs> panellist, he's played a total of 96 games and kicked a total of 49 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2011. He wears a number 11 on his back. Please welcome to the stage, Max Gord. It's a grand old flag. It's a high flying flag. It's the <laughs> Of the set. It's the end really? of the team we love. The <laughs> team of the red and the blue. Every heart beats true for the red and the blue. And we sing this song to you. What do we sing? Should all acquaintance be pulled up? Keep your eye on the red and the blue. How's that? What do you think, boys? How about the crowd? How's it good? Wow. Look at them, they're all smiling, they're all happy. They've been waiting 12 years to get this, this grin on. Taking the Burvale over. Like <laughs> what do you think, mate? This is your first time being on a That's Good Footy panel show. Are you a bit like, yeah, wow. Yeah, unbelievable. I didn't realise there were many people here. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, everyone, for coming out and being here and being part of the show. Uh, great to have you both here and Clayton, your first time. So... You'll be right. You'll yeah, enjoy this. I'm I reckon you, to it. you will. Okay. Uh, the way we're going to do it, though, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do it in our first segment. We call it "It's My Life." It's my Seems fairly appropriate for you, this song. Couldn't have gone with just the Bon Jovi, it's my life. <laughs> no, 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 I had to do it with this one. Right. Felt better. Uh, what we're going to do, boys, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You just build out the answers and uh, we'll, we'll get on with it. Um, how many siblings do you have? We'll start with, start with you first, Clayton. Uh, I've got one brother, Mitch. Uh, he's two years older than me, but I don't really speak to him too often. But, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, two older brothers. Two older brothers. Ages? Uh, ooh. 20, 29 and 31. Yeah, okay, yeah. 29 and 31. Uh, where were you born and is this also where you grew up? Where or when? Uh, where? No, where were you born and oh. is this also where you grew up? I was born in uh, Monash, uh, Melbourne. Yes. And then grew up in Echuca. Echuca, okay, all right. Maxi? Uh, I was born in Frankston. Um, <laughs> quality part of the world. I was lucky to get out of there, really. Um, <laughs> and then... I, uh, I grew up in Frankston, lived in New Zealand for a little bit and eventually made my way to McKinnon. There we go. All right. Uh, who did you barrack for growing up, Clayton? Uh, I used to barrack for the Brisbane Lions. Oh, OK. Brisbane Lions. All right. No comments? <laughs> no? Everyone's uh, they're OK with that. All right. Uh, Richmond. Richmond. Yeah. All right. And you're all OK with that too. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one there. Hey, does the family barrack for who you play for or do they barrack for someone else? How does that work? Uh, Dad still still barracks for Hawthorne. Um, oh yeah. When when they're not versus Melbourne, but uh, mum mum and yeah, the rest of the family all barracking for the days. Good. Uh, all my family still go for the All Blacks. Um, <laughs> Simple a, as that. They're a chance to come across the football finals has enticed them to come to the game this week, which is okay. exciting. Yeah. Um, but they don't know much about footy, so Melbourne for now. Okay. Your mum sits in the team. She does. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get that all night, trust me. <laughs> Do not encourage it. Um, where did you play your first ever game of footy, junior footy? Where was that? And how old were you? Uh, I was in grade four, so I was probably eight or nine. And I played okay. in Truca for the Truca Saints. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, I was 13 and played for Langwarren. 
It's a little, <laughs> little bit later than everyone else. We got a yeah, lucky. Okay. Yeah, it is oh, a bit. Yeah, oh. yeah okay. Um, is there a ritual you have done since you first started playing football that you still do today? A ritual? Mm. Uh, I put my sock. I put my mouth down my sock, but I don't actually wear it. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, my left, my left sock, which is I've always done, which is weird. Always in your left sock. Yeah. When you're not wearing it. I just don't ever. I put it in my sock for the game. I don't take it out. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Wow. So weird. Did most of you know that? <laughs> no. Yeah. Look out for it. That's not bad. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> um, I've. I've got a couple, yeah. but Clayton and I always come out last um, every single time. And there's a few okay. guys that try to steal it. Jeffy Garlett tries to come out near the back. <laughs> so, um, come on, mate, move along. So me and Clayton told Goody to get rid of him and get into Casey. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was really that simple. The only other one we have a problem with was Jake Lever, and we see what happened to him as well. So <laughs> the back, the back, the back is ours. <laughs> Very nice, mate. Thank you. Um, what would you have done if you didn't play footy, both of you? No, not much. No? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you could give me something. I'll, I'm doing not uni much. at the moment, yep. uh, doing commerce at Deakin, but I don't know why I'm doing that either. Uh, <laughs> just to fill in some time? Yeah, which is spare time, just filling in, instead yep. of playing the PlayStation all the time, but I'll probably be working with Dad as a plumber or something. Okay. Uh, all right. I love it. I understand. It's beautiful. Um, <laughs> I'd be involved in hospitality somewhere, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know what doing, but my dream job is to be an air traffic controller. Oh, yeah. Um, at, like, a Los Angeles airport or somewhere real, real busy and okay, land like, all the planes. Very interesting. I could see you at Heathrow. That could work out well, couldn't it? Um, outside of AFL, what is your favourite sport? Uh, probably basketball. OK, NBA? Yeah, NBA, yeah. Yeah, all right. What, what favourite team? Cavs. Our favourite player? Uh, Irving. But okay. He's got, he's got All right. Boston good. Now. Yeah, good. All right. Maxi? Uh, cycling. That's right. Yes, um, you love it. Favourite team uh, for those that are playing at home. Um, favourite team is Team Lotto Jumbo. And my okay. favourite rider is a guy named George Bennett. Right. For those of you playing along at home, write that one down. Um, who, who, if you could, would you most like to meet on the planet? Got someone there? Something uh, spring to mind? Um, <laughs> uh, hold on. It's still alive. Does, they don't have to be. Um, no, if you were thinking someone that's dead, who would you go with? Is Muhammad Ali still alive? Is who? Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. No, he passed away. What am I meeting him? Okay, there we go. Muhammad Ali. All right. Um, oh, Martha Stewart. Okay. <laughs> That's left to centre. It'd be good. Well, she can cook, so it'd be a good dinner. Yeah. Um, and she's got a fucking great life story. <laughs> um. Most of her cakes, understandably, have a file in it. Uh, yeah, correct. Uh. Mm, interesting. Yeah, okay. Um, if you could live in any Melbourne suburb, would you stay where you are or would you move? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Elwood at the moment and it's pretty quick to train, so I'm pretty okay. happy there. Good. All right. Uh, yeah, I've, I've moved every year I've been a footballer, so my nine years I've moved into a different suburb every single time. Have you really? Um, so I've tried a lot, and I think I've finally found the one, Glen Iris. I like it. Oh, yeah. okay. Nice suburb. Excellent. What do you do to relax and unwind? Uh, not go to commerce at Monash? Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> uh, I, I, I play the PlayStation ridiculous amount of time. Should, should I ask what particular game? Uh, FIFA, FIFA and okay. Madden yeah. at the moment, but that's you thought Fortnite story. was coming, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. When he said that, when that when that F word came <laughs> out, I thought, here we go. Yeah, all right. You used, you used to be Fortnite. I was Fortnite for about three months, and I played it too much as I do, and yeah. so now I'm, yeah, FIFA. Said that's it. I'm off it. Yeah. Go on, cold turkey, FIFA. All right, Maxie, what about you? Uh, relaxing. Nah, uh, I'm pretty boring. Read a book. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What are you reading at the moment? Uh, I'm reading the Geraint Thomas. Uh, his autobiography, who was just the winner of the Tour de France, for those that don't know. Okay, wonderful. All right. Um, do you have any movie, TV show, or this one, video game recommendations? Do you have any TV, movie, or video game recommendations? Have you been to see a movie lately? Are you watching something on Stan on Netflix? Uh, oh, oh, my favourite TV show is um, Blue Mountain State, if anyone's heard of that. It's a, probably not. Nah. <laughs> Sweet. Um, <laughs> Shutter Island, movie. It's probably one of my favourite movies I've watched. <laughs> 
Yeah, nothing again. So. <laughs> it's coming down like a lead balloon. You people, yeah, yeah, all right. That's no, all right. Um, I like old movies. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched too many new ones. My, the one I watched yesterday was Big Fat Liar, um, which is obviously... Because we know you love your chick flicks. Yes, that's the fella from Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, Frankie, yeah. someone help me out here. Yeah. Nunes. Uh, he's in Big Fat Liar. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great movie. It's okay. probably... for. Anyone here over the age of 16, I don't recommend it, but um, <laughs> because it's a little bit childish, but <laughs> it's, that's what I watched yesterday. So. All right. You know what you'll be doing tomorrow, Duxie. Um, if you had a victory lap or an introduction song, what would it be? Jeez. Uh, uh, <laughs> Come on, something. Yeah, this song here, yeah, right. Um, oh, it'd be a toss-up yeah. um, between the big show on WWE, his, oh, yeah. his, his one when he comes out, and Vitamin C, Friends, Friends Forever. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Vitamin C, Friends Forever. Okay. Has that given you time to think? Did you want to come up with something better than Achy Breaky Heart? Um, I, if you even knew uh, that, what that was, Achy that Breaky Billy, Heart? Billy Ray, Billy Ray Cyrus. Billy, yes, yeah. it was. Oh, Billy Ray no. Cyrus. Yeah, well done. Um, yeah. actually, Everyone's impressed by that. <laughs> I don't really have a favourite song. Let's just go with... You know Billy yeah. Ray Cyrus. Let's leave it at that. That's beautiful. Hey, did you have a hero or idol growing up and who was it? Yeah, Michael Voss, who played for the Brisbane Lions. I always looked up to him. Good call. Yep. Uh, combination. Yes. Sorry, I'm giving two answers to everyone. Um, John Alomu and Matthew Richardson. Right. Yeah, good. Very, very brilliant in both professions. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, thank you, man. Um, who's your favourite musician or band on the planet? <laughs> no, very random, Max. Well, I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Who's your favourite band or musician on the planet? Don't have one. Don't uh, have one? At the moment, favourite song at the moment is uh, Shotgun by George Ezra. Okay, George yeah. Ezra, yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, The Kooks. The Kooks? Yeah. yeah. Just. A anything in particular? Oh, majority of their music. Obviously, okay. Naive and Seaside and whatnot is a great era for them, but they've just yep. released a new album for those Kooks fans that are out there. Yep. All right, there you go. Um, do you wish you could uh, play a musical instrument, and if so, what would it be? Guitar, definitely. I tried to play it back in grade five, grade six, after doing okay. front of the whole school, and I, I fucked it up, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'll never be like that again. <laughs> that was fluffed it up, he was saying. I stuffed it up. No, no, that's all right. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> It's <laughs> alright mate Completely <laughs> fine <laughs> All good. Um, uh, I reckon it would have been real cool to play double bass Oh yeah, yeah that, I could see you big, doing that big boy, yeah, yeah. yeah That would have been yeah. cool yeah. yeah, a bit of Stray Cat, something like that What's your favourite movie of all time? How many times have you seen it? Uh, I think Shutter Island I think I've seen it about three or four But I never re watch movies, which is real weird Really? I hate it, I hate, hate watching movies But I've watched that three or four times Okay you know, it's an interesting movie, that one. Yeah. All about... Yeah, anyway. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, I like it. Um, uh, New York Minute's right up there. Um, that's obviously the Olsen twins. It's a great journey of the Olsen twins. Um, and more, more normal, 21 and 22 Jump Street are both. Okay. So those, those three I've watched about 100 times each. Wow. 100 times each. Okay. Is there anything that really annoys you at the moment that you want to share with everyone? Anything at all that really annoys you? Um, when I'm trying to sleep, just any sort of noise it really annoys me. Okay. It's weird. I can't. I can't sleep unless it's like completely quiet. Complete silence. Yeah, and get real Darkness. Yeah. No light coming in. Yeah. All that. Okay. All right. Good. Oh. Well, I'm just. I'm. I'm looking at the TAB screen, and when I, when an odds off, when an odds on trotter loses, paying a paying a dollar fifty, that really annoys me. But. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, look, today I drove past the Dalmatian uh, going for number twos on the side of the road and the owner didn't pick it up and I'm Ooh. a big... And I really dislike that. OK. Um, I'm a dog owner myself and clean up after my dog and when yeah. I saw that, I did wind down the window and have a little word to them. Did you? Yeah. Good on you. Well done, Max. Thank I you. like it. Uh, does your partner give you any feedback or insight into your footy? And if you haven't got a partner, I'm talking about somebody from your family. Do they give you insight into your footy? Or feedback. Yeah, so I've got a lovely girlfriend, Soph, and she's uh, she, even if I play a shit game, she always tells me I play really well. So <laughs> oh, she's pretty good. nice. So yeah, she's good. Yeah. Well done. Aww. That's the kind of girlfriend you want. Yeah, lovely. That's, that's beautiful, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> um, it is very nice. We can now joke about it. Last year, 
um, this time of the year when um, we unfortunately miss finals. Are we all right to joke about it yet? No. No, not yet. <laughs> still, <laughs> still too soon, mate. It's been, it's been 12 months. Yeah. Um, when this weekend, it might be okay to talk about it. My girlfriend, Jess, uh, was very talkative during the last quarter of West Coast Adelaide. Um, and she got told where to go. I'm sorry, but she did. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was a pretty stressful moment for all Melbourne fans that are here. So no um, since then, she hasn't spoken a word associated <laughs> with football. Well, nothing better than laying down the rules. All right. Uh, what's your favourite day of the week and why? Uh, today, as two days before, out from the games. Cause okay. We had a day off and I was, like to have a sleep in and chill out and do nothing. So. Okay. Yep, like a bit of hump day. Yeah. Um, I really like Mondays. Okay. Yeah. Um, I go to the Rising Sun every night, uh, every Monday night for dinner with Lyndon Dunn, James Frawley, and Jack Fitzpatrick, and okay. it's great seeing those three guys. So Monday night, I usually get up for that. Good, great. You know, we're probably going to have a few more visitors now. You uh, we, 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 yeah, we change up between a few pubs. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, well done. We're actually, at, we're, we're, we're actually at the bird. Well, I think we're at the Burvale this Monday. <laughs> Well done. Nicely uh, executed. <laughs> hey, where's your best ever holiday ever been? Uh, went to America for about six weeks. Oh, yeah. Where'd you go? Um, went on the East Coast. We went to... Yep. What, yeah, whatever's over that side. I think New York. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember, actually. You know, the, you know yeah, those states on that side of the there thing? There. Yeah. Yeah. For about six weeks, we went to LA for a couple of days. Must have been good. Yeah. <laughs> Must have been fantastic. <laughs> Fair while ago, actually. Yeah. Good. No, I like it. Well done. Max? Uh, well, uh, Oktoberfest was an incredible time. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, the good thing is we, we're playing finals this year, so Oktoberfest we can't actually get to. No, that's but, um, I managed to get that over and done with when we were a bad club a couple well, of years ago. Can I ask... <coughs> and, Thank God for all of that. Did you ever wear Lederhausen? Have you ever? Yeah, yeah you did. Yeah. Got into that. I found as well. one big enough. Um, yes. it's, it's an incredible time, uh, and also Munich in, in itself as a city is a beautiful city. So yeah, architecturally wise, um, I really, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, good. All right, uh, let's go with this, boys. What is your favourite meal, and how often do you have it? And I don't it doesn't have to be in football; it can be out of football. But just tell me what's your favourite meal, and how often do you like to have it? Uh, mine's spaghetti bolognese okay. um, with garlic bread. And yep. I have a paro with it before every game. That's my favourite. Is it made in a restaurant, or do you make it yourself? Homemade. 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 Yep. Beautiful. Mm, nice. Excellent. Uh, I haven't had it for twelve months because I've been on a, a pretty strict diet. But yes. Uh, a bowl of cereal, and in particular muesli flakes. Um, ah, it's in the Uncle okay. Toby's plus range. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, I'll, and I'd have two or three bowls a day when I was really addicted. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. All right. <coughs> What's your favourite Melbourne restaurant? Have you have, do you have one? And do you like to go there frequently? Uh, Waterfront. Okay. Is, uh, yep. And your seafood and steaks? Yep. 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 It's sashimi and sushi. Love it. Good. There you go. Um, itchy knee. Oh, down on uh, Upper Esplanade, yeah. St Kilda. Yeah, all right, very nice. Um, family and friends have flown in from interstate. What are you doing to entertain them? Not much. <laughs> Not much. Uh, Not much. Nah. I don't know. You can play multiplayer, maybe. Yeah, FIFA. maybe multiplayer FIFA. <laughs> Mum and Dad on there. <laughs> if they're lucky, they can watch. <laughs> <laughs> Mum and Dad can watch. Wow. All right, that's very nice. I like to think I know a little bit about Melbourne hospitality, so I'd take them to some nice bars or restaurants that they might not have been to. Yeah, good, culture-wise. Yeah. I like it. Um, how are you with flying interstate for games? Are you a sleeper or an annoyer? A, sl oh. a sleeper or an annoyer? Definitely annoyer. Yep. Um, I can't sleep from, obviously, the noise, so I'm of annoying course. everyone. It's no darkness. And, yeah. And, um, yeah. So you're learning a lot tonight. Yep. We have a we have a nun, uh, an, another annoyer in Christian Petraca who's just oh. who's just recently taken some pills now every time he and he drools the whole way and sleeps. It's great. <laughs> it's actually no. great. Um, it just adds just another piece to that jigsaw <laughs> now, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. Um, I, uh, I'm too big for the chair, so I don't sleep. But I'm not annoyed by the plane, though. I don't no. mind it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Christian Petrarca. Did we ever find out what that thing he was doing with his chin was that? It was Gu Gus had a, a couple of stitches in there, and I think they've been blood brothers. Um, wow. Yeah, it was weird. Mm, all right. Glad I asked. Um, what is the craziest, <laughs> smartest, or dumber thing, dumbest thing you've ever done? Craziest, smartest. smartest, craziest, or dumbest thing you've ever done? 
dumbest would probably be getting caught drink driving. Oh, yeah. That's... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's easy. Yep. Pretty easy. Yep. Probably not that funny yep. either. No. <laughs> oh, it can be. Well, I'll go a similar path, but my, uh, mine probably all three of them, craziest, smartest and dumbest, is all the one thing. Good. Um, I had a dart on the way to train in, a, in 2010. Um, that's definitely the dumbest thing I've done. It's ended up being pretty smart because I've managed to build a brand off having that dart in 2010. So um, not many other footballers can manage to get away of having a dart and everyone still loves them. So I managed to do that. Um, I haven't had a dart since. <laughs> wow. Okay. All uh, right. Hey, um, I'm going to try this one out. No, actually, I'll wait. I'll go straight to this. I want to know. We're going to talk about some stuff at the club. All right. We'll go into, into this nice and quickly. Who's the one person you'd want to have the ball to win the game to kick after the siren? <laughs> not this week. No, 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 no one who got too long. Touchy subject. <laughs> Is this like comp wide or c club wide? Uh, I don't mind either or either. Club. Well, we've got some guys who have done it. So yeah. Christian Salem's, yeah. well, he was uh, just before the sign, yeah. so he's, he's done it. Uh, Jordan Lewis has done it. Tom McDonald, I think, has kicked a goal close yeah. enough yeah. to the sign. Yeah. Oh, against West Coast. Yeah. So I'd, I'd, I'd back Nathan Jones, just. Although he's been horrible in the last few weeks. Yeah. 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 He's on like two goals, six or something. Yeah. Uh, um, Salo, he's... He's the best kick at our club, so... Yeah, all right. OK, good. Uh, let's go through these nice and quick. Who was the coach's pet? Billy Stretch. Billy Stretch. <laughs> wow. Yeah, combined with Christian Petraka. OK, all. all right. Who loves getting their rig out at the club? You're not looking at me, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Christian Petraka. Yeah. Uh, Jake Melksham, James Holmes. Jake Melksham. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, does your partner come to watch you play football at the ground or does she stay and watch you at home? She comes. She's came to nearly every single game. Brilliant. Excellent. My partner used to go to the MCG when I was playing at Casey, so she... Um, <laughs> <laughs> she got her venues wrong. Um, <laughs> at least she's loyal. I like that. Excellent. Um, wow. Who thinks they're the most intellectual at the club? Angus Brayshaw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he thinks it's a class above. Is it, is that, would that word, the word thinks, would that be more appropriate here, or he actually is? He's pretty smart, but he, he knows it, and he thinks it as well. Okay, all right, okay. All right, what do you think here, Maxie? Oh, we've got a guy called Mitch King. Oh. We call him Know-It-All King. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he has an answer for every single thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. Surprised you can say that. Actually. Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll retract my statement. <laughs> go with King. Well, I'm going to go with Mitch King as well. All right. Um, who is careful with their money? And you need to change that word careful with another word. S Tight ass. Yep. All right, that'll do. Yeah, we can go Angus that. Brayshaw. Angus Brayshaw. He's the worst by country mile, and maybe Christian really? Petrucker as well. Yeah, I live yeah. with Gussie in... Uh... OK. Yeah, he does owe me a coffee. Yep. We'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll give you the microphone soon, Duxie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Angus Brayshaw got a free jumper from St Goliath and wore it for six weeks, including training. Um, <laughs> So that's, yeah, he is right. Jack Lyon is up, up, up there as well. Yeah, OK. All right. Uh, Angus Brayshaw has a $5 New Balance jumper that he's worn for four years now. Yeah, he's worn that a lot. Every single winter. Wow. Blue, blue New Balance jumper. It's cost him four ninety five. Goodness me. Who are, speaking of that, then, who has absolutely no fashion sense at the club? Probably me. Um, I, wear the same, I wear the same trackies and jumpers every single day. Oh, OK. The season. Yeah. But if it, away from the club, I think I'm all right, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah, and then... Uh, <laughs> Tommy, Tommy McDonald would have to be the worst consistently. Okay. The combination of Tom and Oscar. So Tom, Tom's bad, but yeah. Oscar gets Tom's hand-me-downs. <laughs> oh, so no. So that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> the legacy carries on. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Who spends the most uh, amount of time in front of the mirror? Hair, physique, whatever. It's probably Louis spray painting that hair, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Got to make sure it gets it right. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, Louis. Let's go with that. Yeah, all right. Beautiful. What's the one achievement you're most proud of? Probably just getting drafted. Good. Um, yeah, I was nowhere and then luckily I picked up with pick four, so... Good on you, mate. Well done. Nice answer. 
Um, yeah, getting drafted's pretty good. Um, I won a, I won a $9,500 quaddy when I was 16. Um, I had 30% of, obviously, about a 35 grand quaddy, so that was a pretty impressive moment for myself. Wow. Um, but getting drafted is certainly right up there as well. <laughs> they're, probably, they're probably the Quinella. Yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm not sure what's first, what's second. Yeah, OK. All right, Joey's still out on that one. What is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Uh, Brendan McCartney told me to follow Billy Stretch around for the entire pre-season and sort of help my, help my career, so, yeah. Nice piece of advice, then. Yeah. Yeah, good. Um, Mum told me to... Um, Stop putting my T-shirts in the dryer because I'm an incredibly tall person yep. and every single T-shirt I've ever owned has shrunk. So um, eventually mum got to a point where she told me to stop putting them in and now I hang them on the clothesline. What a good son you are. I love it. Um, what's been the best ever win you've been involved in? Something spring to mind right there? The West Coast game in the West Coast. Yeah. Both of them. Both of them. That, that last one was pretty sensational. Yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah they're both. I love watching that game. Brilliant. Max? Yeah, I, I agree. My debut was pretty special. I yep. enjoyed that game. We were 0 and 9 and came up against Essendon on a Friday night and had seven guys that were in the middle of the song that game. So, seven guys for their first win. Um, wow. That was pretty special. That well. is good. Yeah, all right. What's the one thing you can't live without? Uh, Moisturiser. Did you sun, hear moisturiser? Sun, sunscreen. <laughs> oh, right, I get it. Red hair. Uh, yeah. Right, OK. Sunscreen. Yeah. Uh, I just won't Sorry. buy into the, to the whole uh, green man thing by getting a Mikey or whatnot. I can't live without my car. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even walk to the local cafe. I'd drive to the, I'd drive to the local cafe. That's it. OK. All right. Um, what is, what, who, in your opinion, is the best player at the Melbourne Football Club? Max. Very nice. <laughs> Oh. Your turn. Me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Max Gorn, ladies and gentlemen. Well said. Touche to that. Um, what's the one thing you love about footy the most? Uh, yeah, just probably just playing on the MCG. It's okay. We get to play finals, so playing in the final. We, okay. Yeah. Playing in finals at the MCG. That's what you love about the football the most. Um, I'm pretty lucky to be in the position I'm in because you get to get involved in a lot of charities um, and getting drafted to Melbourne Football Club gave me the opportunity to get involved in Freeze MND and Reach and they're two things I'm pretty passionate about and obviously Beautiful. BCNA was another one the other day as well so Melbourne Football Club's been really good in getting yeah. involved in charities and I'm heavily involved in Reach now and it's been a real turning point in my own life um, and being able to help some kids in Reach as well so that's easily the best thing about footy. That's fantastic. What a lovely answer. Please put your hands together for that. Thanks, mate. Very nice. Hey, after a night game, is it easy to wind down? Or uh, what's it like? How often do you normally get to bed after a, let's yeah. hypothetically say, a Friday or a Saturday night game? Uh, so I have like a coffee before the game, then a couple of nodos, which are like caffeine tablets. So I'm pretty yeah. wide after the game. So I'm about 3 or 4 a.m. So it's a pretty wow. long night. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. We had to start having. Uh, the day, the next day off because of Clayton, because he, because he generally can't get to sleep straight after game. So, wow. Um, no, I'm pretty knackered post game. I'm okay. straight to straight to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost asleep in the car. Jeez, that's great. Okay. Are you superstitious in your preparation for a game? I know we talked about the mouth guard, but is there something else that? Um, no, it's probably like the whole week. I have like a, a whole like uh, thing in my phone. I have to get everything ticked off for the week, so I'm confident for the week. It's not usually just one thing the day before because. Probably not going to make you play anyway for just the one thing. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, I reckon I am. Yeah. Um, I have the same meals at the same time. I don't see anybody. Um, okay. I watch similar movies, like I said, in the yep. morning. Yeah, I'd say I do pretty much the same thing every single week. Wow. Okay. Is there a ground around Australia which you least prefer to play at? We don't because it's so hot and sunny. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> they are a sponsor. You um, know that. Uh, Perth. <laughs> <laughs> we love NT, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Travel there. Oops. <laughs> um, uh, after round 18, getting booed by 40,000 Geelong fans, I'm going to say Simmons. Yeah, right. Uh, okay, GMA, HBA Stadium. Or whatever, yeah, or, or whatever it's called. Who cares, he says. Um, and your last one in this segment, boys, which club has the most feral supporters? 
in your opinion? Uh, Adelaide were pretty bad. We, we bet them there last year and uh, we're, getting, we're getting spin on by half of them. When we were really? Yeah. It was That's pretty disgusting. bad. Yeah. Is that actual? You were getting spat on? Yeah, they were trying to spit on us, yeah. Yeah, right. Um, wow. I thought you would have said Carlton after last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty bad too. Uh, there's not many good ones, to be honest. No. Um, West Coast were pretty bad. Port were pretty bad. Okay. Um, they were the two that I noticed most this year. Port, yeah, the Ad Adelaide and Port Adelaide, are, there's something different in their water. Well, there is, because it tastes <laughs> shit. But. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can you please put your hands together for Clayton Oliver and Max Gorn? That's It's My Life. Excellent. That was wonderful. Uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to talk about this is first week of the finals. Obviously what we alluded to, or what I alluded to off the top of the show, it's the first time you guys have been there in 12 years. Congratulations on that. We're going to... Um, yeah. I'll go into uh, all of that a little bit later on. We're going to talk about the tips for the first three games and then we're going to come back to um, the one that's most important uh, that we want to talk about in a little bit more greater detail tonight. It is uh, first week of the finals. First game tomorrow night, Thursday 6th of September. It's at the MCG, 7.20pm. It's Richmond in first position. Let's see Richmond. There he is. Uh, come out against the Hawks who are in fourth position. Let's see them. All right, there we go. Uh, boys, every single game is critical going into the finals. There's, I'm not going to you know, point out anything that's not the blatant obvious here. Ladder, ladder position, where you finished at the end of the home and away, it counts for nothing. Everybody's got the best chance of winning uh, moving into the finals. What are your thoughts here between Richmond and Hawthorne? Give us a tip. Or your thoughts. You can allude to it. Um, yeah, Richmond obviously... Yeah, they're pretty handy at the moment. They're running premiers, but I reckon Hawthorne might get them in pretty good form at the moment. And okay. um, yeah, I can they'll, they'll get the win. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer that. You just go well. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, moving right along. I was, I was going to back Richard, but I hope Hawthorne absolutely <laughs> smash him. <laughs> yeah, well said. All right, let's go along to this game then. Uh, moving along, it's Saturday the 8th of September. This game is at the SCG, 4.20pm. It's Sydney in sixth position. Let's hear them. Cheers, cheers. Beauty, mate. Thank you very much. Let's go straight to GWS. <laughs> There we go there. Thanks, mate. So we've got two handy inclusions. We've got Parker and Buddy coming back for the Swans. GWS is probably um, Reese. Uh, there could be a couple of others. We won't go into all of that. Um, but it is six versus seven. So SCG, these two always go hell for leather at each other. What do you think will be the outcome out of this one? Uh, I reckon the big brothers, uh, Sydney, will, will smoke them. Okay, uh, good. Comfortably. Yeah, all right. Um, not much interest in it because we, we won't play one of these teams unless they make the granny. So, uh, obviously, we're making the granny, so they need to make the granny with us. Um, so, I'm not as interested in it, but Buddy showed what he can do against us. Uh, we had Sam Frost, who was in some really good form himself, and he kept him to two goals. But two goals, six, and a couple out on the full, he can really get an impact in the game, and I can't see Phil Davis shutting him down, so... Shitty, shitty for you as well. All right. Let's go to this game then. This is a Perth Stadium, 6.10pm. Uh, it is West Coast in second position. Let's hear them. Thanks, mate. Uh, we'll go straight to Collingwood in third. All right. 6.10pm, um, West Coast versus Collingwood. It's on the uh, West Coast Eagles home deck. What do you think here, boys? Uh, I reckon West Coast because they're pretty good over there. Yeah. Besides us beating them. Handy inclusion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think West Coast get the job done. All right. Maxi? As much as everyone here wants a, a Melbourne prelim, I see pies, I'd love to go to West Coast and play them in a prelim yeah, over right. there um, and get them again. So I'm going West Coast to beat pies. Wow. All right. Very confident. I like it. Uh, let's get into this game, ladies and gentlemen. This game is proudly brought to you by the big picture people, the experts in home cinema. Let's get the big picture on this game. It is at the MCG. It is Friday the 7th of September... 7:50 p.m. It's Geelong in eighth position. Let's hear that. We are That'll Geelong. do there. Let's go straight to this one. It's the Melbourne Demons in fifth. It's a grand old flag. It's a high flying flag. It's the emblem for me and for you. It's the emblem of the team. 
team we love, the team of the red and the blue. Every heart beats true for the red and the blue, and we sing this song to you. everyone getting involved in that. It feels good to hear that, you boys being here on a night, two nights before you're about to go out onto the MCG, onto the hallowed turf and, and play in your first final. Uh, as I alluded to, I do want to go into a couple of things here and I just want to start off with some bad stuff, but I've prefaced it by saying good things come to those who wait. Off field, the Melbourne Football Club has had six coaches in 10 years. Tragically, along the way, you've lost greats like Robbie Flower, uh, Jimmy Steins, uh, coach Dean Bailey and player Troy Broadbridge. Uh, young Jesse Hogan was diagnosed with testicular cancer last year, but also lost his father, Tony, passing away in that same year. Um, but then we started to turn the corner where the, the Melbourne Football Club started to get rid of some hoodoos off their back. Uh, on field, you beat the Kangaroos after a 17-game losing streak. Uh, you beat the Saints in 2017 after a 10-year long stretch. Um, you win at Subiaco in 2017 after a losing streak of 17 games there. You lost 10 games straight to Geelong up until 2015. Now, after 12 years, guess what? The Ds are in the finals. <laughs> now, from what I understand, you're the second highest scoring team in the AFL, which is great news. You've had some standouts um, it, that have played awesome football for the Melbourne Football Club this year. I just want to allude to a couple of names. It's probably a little bit unfair of me not to throw more names into this, but standouts, Angus Brayshaw, after numerous concussions, he's come back and had a stellar career, um, a stellar season, more to the point. Tom McDonald has rejuvenated his football career, now playing forward. Um, newcomers, James Harms, Bailey Fritch, uh, Neville Jetta, Christian Petrarca, have all played their varying roles, and not to mention you two boys. Congratulations to both of you. Ladies and gentlemen, you are sitting here in the presence of two All-Australians from the Melbourne Football Club. Congratulations to both of you. Take that in because what an accolade. It's so awesome to know that you made the All-Australian team. I was chatting last week with, with Kochi and, and we're having the Richmond show for that bloke that he's actually got pissed off and left. Um, <laughs> but... I was chatting to the boys last Wednesday night because it was All-Australian night and I found out at the end of the show that we'd just done that you boys both had been um, nominated as being All-Australians and I was like, mate, that's awesome. And I said to Kochi at the time, I said, what's it like with the accolade to be named as All-Australian and for the rest of your life, that's what you're going to be introduced as, All-Australian and how many more times you might be nominated as All-Australian is how many times it'll always be mentioned for the rest of your life. So seriously, congratulations on that. It is a wonderful achievement. Whilst we're on achievements, uh, Clayton, you're always, you, uh, you are also named as the vice captain in the under-22 team. That is an awesome achievement as well. Well done. So I've spoken about the bad, I've spoken about the good, and that's why I prefaced it by saying that all good things come to those who wait, and the Melbourne Football Club are now going to be playing in finals. We're going to talk about the things that you've probably heard up to a million times between last week, the bye round, and now coming up to this. Uh, you've met the Cats twice this year, beaten in round one by three points, and then with a Zach Tui go after the siren. We're not going to go into it, all right? We're just going to say that's happened and got to move forward. But I did notice on the weekend that Casey got up and beat Geelong by 91 points. Yeah. Is that an omen? I hope so. hope so. That was pretty good, Casey. Yeah. Um, for anyone who was down there, was there a show of hands? How many people went to Casey? That's not bad. Duxy. Um, <laughs> they, uh, Duxy Geelong would go Ge to the Antarctica to watch them. <laughs> Geelong had 17 listed players there and a couple yeah. of guys that were fighting for a spot to play. So mm. for Casey to do what they did, it was pretty special. Absolutely. Um, possibly back in for the Ds, uh, Mitch Hanna, Jaden Hunt, Joel Smith, Dom Tyson, Jack Viney. Give me what you can as to who is out of those names. Uh, my guess is Mitch Hannon will play. Um, he did some pretty good stuff down at Casey for those that watched. Kicked three, took mark of the year. Um, kicked a, he was really good in the midfield. Um, Joel Smith's coming back from his whatever he did against Gold Coast. What did he do? Broke his shoulder, clavicle, oh, collarbone, AC, one of the was three. Yep. Um, and he's come back really quick and played some pretty good footy on the weekend. They tried him forward as well, so that might be something you'd potentially see against Geelong. Dom will play. Um, he Oh, I hope so, because I put my, with his yeah, I'll put my boot right. into his own, own, own. I'm pretty <laughs> impressed that my foot could break, a, could break an arm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so sorry about that, Dom, but he'll play. Yeah. 
And Vines will definitely play as well. So Great. Excellent. Good news there. I did say a couple of people will play then, so I mean, unfortunately yeah. there might be some people there might down be a the other end. Of, in, uh, yeah. I think you're safe. You're safe, I think. You'll play. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to look at <laughs> <on> his face. <laughs> He's like, me? Really? Uh, you'll, be, you'll be sweet, mate. All Australian vice captain, as I just mentioned, under 22 team. Uh, I'll move over to this. You lose Bernie Vince at the end of the year or at the end of the season, um, however that falls, uh, after 229 games. Put your hands together for uh, Bernie Vince. <laughs> Well done. He's had a great career both at Adelaide and Melbourne. Um, possibly back in for the Cats. A couple of interesting ones here because they were obviously talking about how they can combat it against you and the Ruck. And I talk of two actual individuals by the names of uh, Ryan Abbott and also Reece Stanley. So it'll be interesting to see who they bring in. Do you care? No. Uh, I played Zach Smith in the first game and then obviously Reece Stanley in the second. So I'm presuming I'm going to get a third. Yep. Um, Abbott, Radig Radigalia, they're both... Uh, relatively good players. I've actually watched Abbott for years, um, yep. been playing some good VFL footy and I thought I was going to get him last time and I didn't, so I'm well prepared. Um, just on Bernie, it is, it is uh, pretty sad to see the big fella go, but um, you can't forget what Bernie's done for his football club. He came at a very bad time to a team that wasn't attracting any star players unless we threw the kitchen sink at them. Yep. Um, so Bernie came on relatively... I um, mean, you won't mind me saying it, relatively small money compared to someone like a Bernie Vince should be getting paid on the market. And yep. um, he came and really changed the culture of our club along with a few other people. And um, hopefully he can get back for a couple more games still to go at the end of the year. That's awesome. Well said, Max. <laughs> well said. So uh, there's a couple of other names in there. Lockie, Lockie Fogarty, um, Jordan Kuniko, uh, Jackson Thurlow uh, and Asava uh, Radigalia. So... Who knows? We'll just wait and see how that one plays itself out. How do you see this game being played out? What do you boys want to share? Give us these wonderful fans that have come along to see you tonight, tonight some insight. Ah, uh, well, hopefully we win. <laughs> um, That'd be nice, yeah? I know. It'll be, obviously be a tough battle between um, yeah. Geelong there. Very good team. They've got the three stars in the midfield. It'll be a good battle between uh, us, mids and them and the rest of the team. And it should be a good contested game, finals, yep. final style sort of game. And... Yeah, and hopefully we get the, the win and we move on next week. Where do you see it being won? Um, hopefully before the last 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is a very good answer. Yeah. It was, they're both pretty nerve-wracking games. I actually I can't remember anything from the first game. I've been seeing a psychologist twice a week. <laughs> um, so I think round one was Brisbane now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, look... Obviously, Hawkins kicked seven last time we played them. Mm. Um, and Menzel kicked five the first time we played them. So... Um, they've taken control of one or two of our players in our defensive lineup twice now. Okay. Um, Frosty's going to be really exciting to play on Hawkins. I reckon that's going to be a great battle. Yep. Um, and hopefully, maybe a Hibbard really does the job well on Menzel, which would be good. Um, and then obviously they've got some star players in the midfield, but not just them. Menegola's gone and kicked three or four in the last yeah. couple of weeks. So, yep. um, and they've got some more Shanes in the back line with yep. um, Stewart and a few others. So, it's. It's going to be a good game. Um, I hope everyone tunes in. Obviously, the 160 here are definitely going to be tuning in, but hopefully we get a few more and um, we can finally return the favour to Geelong after the last two Wouldn't games. it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? Um, I've also asked you... I've asked you this question as... The, not you, Clayton. I apologise. But, um, Max, when you've been on the show previously, I've said... I've asked everybody all year, what do you think of the, the buy after the Round 23 round? And most people say, and you alluded to the same thing, when I get there, I'll let you know. You just went through it. What do you now think? What do you think of the, the buy round after round 23? I was just saying that because I had no idea, really. Um, I, it's, it's just a long break. Um, every now and then we play on a Friday night. Every, I say every now and then. There's been three in my life. But... <laughs> And it's similar. If you go Friday to Sunday, that's, all, that's a sort of nine, ten-day break. This has been kind of similar. Um, we got the first three days off last, last week. Uh, and we've been training relatively hard ever since. So yep. um, it hasn't really put a difference into too much. It's just been... A, okay. We've seen it as a longer break rather than a buy. Yeah, right. If that makes sense. No, it does. Absolutely. I've also asked this um, question all year. Who's your Brownlow chip for 2018? According to most players that have appeared on these shows throughout the season, it's really down to two people, you and Tommy Mitchell. Me and Tom Mitchell? Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, That's 90% of the players that have appeared on this show this year. I, like, I actually really like Dane Beans. Um, okay. 
I think he has played some terrific games. Yeah. And get with, not that I've looked into it too much. You'll get the best on in every single one of their wins, which is only five, but yeah. there's 15 votes. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if you do win a Brownlow, I suppose it's similar to an All-Australian and um, the Coaches Award I won earlier in the year. They're just acc- accolades that really they'll go to the back of your mind until team success. Um, yep. So all that we're focusing on right now is purely winning this week. Yep. And then, therefore, you need to win the next week. And there's four of them, so there's four little games in this little tournament, and we're pretty excited. Excellent. All right. Um, what's the feeling? But yep, Sorry, yeah. Do you have a, do you have a Brownlow tip, though? Uh, our, Dusty or Gorny or Wynn, I reckon. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. Excellent. Um, what's the feeling been like at, down at the club this week? I know you just sort of alluded to, you know, but what's it been like for you? Yeah, it's been obviously a really exciting week. Um, yeah, I haven't been here for a long time, so all the boys are really excited and looking forward to it. And I think there's a few nerves around, but yeah, it's just all natural. And um, Chafing the bit, can't wait to get out there. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah. It's been a bit of a longer break, so we've had a few mm. training sessions, which has been nice and it's been uh, relaxing. I'm just looking forward to it. Good. We've been waiting to see what this 25 games of finals experience of Jordan Lewis brings, but nothing changes. <laughs> it's actually the same. Yeah, it's right. incredible. Okay. It's a big fluff. Yeah. Um, As he comes down and said, gather around me, boys. No, he said nothing. Yeah, no. right. <laughs> I'm waiting. Maybe it'll come at three-quarter time. Is that when it'll come? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's brought nothing this week. Did he not make a point about staying that he was staying off, sustaining from alcohol over the, this period? Yeah, you was put it? your foot in that, didn't you? Tra- track track set me up for failure because I got asked a question, yeah. but it was prompted with, so you're not drinking anymore? And I, I just sort of said yes because I assumed that's what the answer was, but then it just got taken out of proportion because what Louis says. So. Not so like Mel- the media to do that, yeah. is it? Yeah. Yeah. Melbourne yeah. Storm and Hawthorne, who Louis knows well, both get off the grog towards the end of the year. And it was, we just said it could be a good thing for us as well. Um, the grog's still going to be there. Yep. Um, it's still going to be there come whenever we finish. So there's no reason to be doing it now. Um, I always say Bali will still be there as well, but a couple of earthqu- earthquakes. I'm actually a bit worried about Bali. Um, <laughs> so it might not still be there. But, um, so that's just what Louis said and Clayton said it as well. And um, okay. it hasn't been a massive talking point amongst us. So you still right. had a red, a red with dinner. Yeah, cool. All right. And your last question here. How much is importance is given to good grooming and a new haircut leading into the finals? A lot. Yeah, I've, a lot. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, sorry, I've, I've booked him for a haircut tomorrow. Okay. So, um, All right. yeah, I was meant to get one this morning, but I slept in too late, so I missed it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I've got one tomorrow, so I'll be looking sharp, hopefully. Beautiful. No, uh, yeah, this is, I mean, when you're playing VFL, there's always a TV game once every seven weeks. Yeah. And people do their hair for that TV game. Yeah. This is the, the version of a TV game. This is Friday Night Lights, so um, you will see everyone with what they think is their best version of their hair. <laughs> So if you dislike someone's hair, they actually wanted it like that for this. So wow. I shaved my head and had this beard because I think it looks okay. Um, <laughs> but a lot of people disagree. It's, so. it's actually why I asked that question because it's something then when the fans are watching and they will be watching the final series and they will be watching on Friday night and uh, they'll check out your haircut on Friday night and go, that's the haircut he said he was going to get on Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, by the way, your beard's looking um, quite ravenous. Looks fabulous. I have no idea what ravenous means, but I'll take it. Um, <laughs> it looks good. It, it could be in its last couple of days, to be honest. Um, yeah. I, I can't see myself having it for the whole off-season, but I might have it back for next year again. Then. All right, well done. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please put your hands together for both the boys? Thanks for that, guys. Oh, yeah. That game was proudly brought to you by the big uh, picture people, the experts in home cinema, six great locations, South Morang, Cheltenham, Fountain Gators, Hoppers Crossing and Water Gardens and the Gold Coast. Thank you very much for that. We're looking for two contestants to come up here and participate. We want two... <coughs> I'll introduce the segment as you make your way up. It's called Simply the Best. You're simply the best. we got Ross and... Ross and Mel. Welcome to the show, boys. Pull up a seat. Sit up there down the front. Sandy's going to hand you a microphone each. Whilst she's doing that, I'm going to explain this segment to the boys. Uh, Boys, you're going to be keeping score. These two gentlemen reckon they know a bit about the Melbourne Football Club. I'm going to be asking them a series of questions. With their microphones, they're going to buzz in with their name using their microphone. And if they are correct, you will turn over the paddle for each point that they get subsequently until we come up with a winner at the end. So, Ross, you have your microphone. Yes, good. Can you test it by saying your name into that microphone? 
Ross. Wonderful, mate. A little bit louder and keep it close to your chin, chin, uh, because when I ask the questions, I want you to get in there as quickly as you can. I'm going to do the same with you, Mel. Can you test it? Mel. Beautiful. Both your buzzers are working. Well done. <laughs> What's going to happen here, boys? I'm going to read out these questions. First one in. Boys will keep score. Ross, Clary's playing for you. And uh, Mel, Gorney's playing for you. Are you ready to go, boys? Yep. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Your first one starts now. How many, how many premierships has your club Ross, won? Ross, 12. Ross. 10. Ah, uh, 12, sorry. It is 12. Well done. <laughs> how many times has your team played in a losing grand final? Ross. Ross. Six. No, five. Mm. Oh, the paper lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get it, no. Uh, Ross said six and it was five. What's that? Sorry. No, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, who is your team's captain? Ross. Mal. Ross. Uh, Nathan Jones and Jack Varney. Correct. One point there. Who wears the number seven at your club? Ross. But Ross. Jack Viney. Jack Viney is correct. Can we, um, can we test Mel's buzzer? Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> it's too bloody quick. <laughs> Have a go, Mel. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> okay. Closest to within a 1,000, boys, how many members does your club currently have? Mel. Mel. 45? Yeah, mate, 44,275. <laughs> You're off the mark. Well done. <laughs> Max is excited. He's finally doing something up here. <laughs> Where did your team finish on the ladder at the end of the home and away season last year? Ross. Mel Ross. Ninth. Correct. You know a bit about the Melbourne Football Club. Well done. How many games did your team win last year at the end of the home and away season? Ross. Mel Ross again. Twelve. Well, you would be correct again. What year did your team last win a grand final and who did they play? Mel. Mel. 1964 Collingwood. Well done. You weren't, you weren't born there, Ross? Uh, no, I wasn't. No, oh, okay. Uh, well done, <laughs> Mel. That's how old I am. Yeah. <laughs> 1964 Collingwood is correct. How many points did you win that grand final by? Ross. Mel. Ross. Four. Correct. It is four. This is for two points, boys. How are we going score-wise? Seven versus three. Okay. For two points, boys, who was your club's leading goal kicker in 2017? Oh, um, Bonus Ross. Point. It, it is Ross, but hang on. Bonus point if you can tell me how many goals as well. Uh, Jeff Garlett. Is correct. How many oh, goals, I'm going to guess here. 42. Spot on. Wow. Jeff Garlett, 42. <laughs> Two points. Well done, mate. Sorry, Max. That's all right. <laughs> How many home and away games have Melbourne won this year? Ross. Ross? 14. I don't know. 13. Yes. Yeah, I think it was 14. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was 14. Well done, Ross. You're going nuts here. Yeah. Um, three points, mate. This is for both of you, especially for you, Mel. Yeah, thanks. Um, who was the last Melbourne player to win a Brownlow medal? Ross. Mel. And before you answer it, it's for three points. Give me their name, the year, and how many votes. Go. Shane Wo Woden, 2024. Wow. <laughs> All three points. Uh, wow. Uh, that's the end of the segment because uh, it would just be too embarrassing to go any further. Um, <laughs> Well yeah. done, Ross. Uh -huh. That was a... You know what? You are simply the yeah, best. Mate. That was brilliant. Wow. Hey, Mel. What we're going to do... Just one sec. Sandy, if you could um, walk around the front and just uh, show everybody what Ross has won. Have a look at that. So, go, Demons. You've won a mud cake. All right? Um, whilst Sandy's sorting that out... Hey, Ma Mel, you don't go home empty-handed. There's actually wow. a $40 voucher from the cheesecake shop in there, so you can go and get your own mud yeah. cake. That's yours. Right. On top of that, there's a beanie to keep your head warm. Thank you. And on top of that, there's a little merchandise pack from That's Good for Footy. Jesus. Magnificent. Good on you, champ. <laughs> Thanks, Ross. Thanks, Mel. He is simply the best. You're simply the best. Good on you, boys. That edition of Simply the Best was brought to you by the Cheesecake Shop, the, the nation's most loved cheesecake made with love. We need two contestants up here. Um, two kids would be great. Who are the kids? Sandy, can you choose the kids for me? That's you, Duxy. Sandy's going to choose the kids. While she's doing that, we'll introduce it. It's called Say My Name. This is a segment, boys. It's called Say My Name. You've got 45 seconds on the clock. 
I'm going to read out a player's number, a current day player from your club. You've got to give me that person's Christian name and surname. Okay. Have to get Christian name and surname. You can't, can't give me a nickname and you can't give me their oh, surname. Okay. Okay. Just right. ask what's Christian name. <laughs> <laughs> We're in trouble here. <laughs> um, Christian name is their first name. Sorry. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Jet's dad just said, swap sides, quick. Uh, not bad, I like that. You'll actually be good at yeah, You'll be right. I'm real good. You'll be good. Um, so the rules again, I'm going to uh, read out the number. It's from Melbourne, yeah? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. For those that are playing along, he just asked, is this from Melbourne? <laughs> yes. All right. Um, this is Melbourne current day players. I'm going to read out their number. You've got to give me their first name and their surname, which yeah. is their last name. All right, so here we go. Your first one starts now. Number 39. Neville Jetta. Correct. Number two. Nathan Jones. Correct. Number 10. Angus Brayshaw. Correct. Number 14. Michael Hibbard. Correct. Number 28. Austin McDonald. Correct. Number 35. Harry Petty. Correct. Number 32. Tom Bug. Correct. Number 34. Mitch King. Correct. Number three. Christian Salem. Correct. Number one. Jesse Hogan. Correct. Number 36. Jeffy Gallett. Correct. Number five. Christian Bajaka. Correct, number 42. Josh Wagner. Correct, number 6. Jordan Lewis. Correct, number 40. Paddy McKenna. Correct, number 21. Pedersen. Cameron C Pedersen. Correct, number 44. Joel Smith. Correct, number 30. Alex Newborn. Correct, number 12. Dom Tyson. Correct, number 18. Jack Rodson. Wow. Wow. 15 jet. Wow. Bit of, a, bit of a bluff at the start. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Well done, mate. That is seriously a great number. 15. 15 in 45 seconds. That's huge. How are you feeling, Gordy? I was in trouble with him. Hey. I had Matthew Bate for number six. That's how <laughs> I was doing. Wow. 15. All right. Uh, so, Angelique, you're going to be playing for Max now. Every time you hear this word correct, um, you flip over the paddle. Your first one will start now. Number 31. Bailey Fritch. Correct. Number 33. Oscar Baker. Correct. Number twenty. Uh, number eleven. Max Gorn. Correct. Number seven. Jack Liney. Correct. Number twenty-two. Uh, Aaron Vandenberg. Correct. Number thirty-seven. Uh, Dion Johnson. Correct. Number eight. Jake Lever. Correct. Number twenty-three. Uh, Bernie Vince. Correct. Number thirteen. Uh, Jordy McKenzie. Now Clayton Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Number four. Uh, James Harms. Correct. Number twenty-four. Uh, Liam Jarrah. Um, Jay Kennedy Harris. Yes. Well done. Number fifteen. Uh, Ricky Pettard, no, nah, <laughs> Billy Stretch. Yes, number 25. Uh, Kyle Cheney, um, Tom McDonald. <laughs> yes, number 17. Uh, <laughs> Sam Frost. Yes, correct, number nine. Uh, Jack Trenger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was it? 14. Oh, <laughs> the last one for those playing along at home was number nine, Charlie Spargo. Uh, but you finished up with a score of 14. Wow, not bad. That's awesome. Tell me, boys, before I look after the prizes, how did you do that? Is it uh, a visual thing? Do you go around the change rooms? Is it? Yeah, it's a locker for me. So Lockers. I'm third hand, so I just... Yeah, right. Yeah. Max? No, nah, that's word association almost. Every number I thought of a uh, pass player. So it was actually quite hard when it popped up in my head, hence why I was saying the pass player. Wow, mate, that was brilliant. Well done. Uh, what's going to happen here? Thank you very much. Uh, Chet, you're our winner. How do you feel? Pretty pumped. Uh, that's yours. Thank you very much. Thanks, boys. What we're going to do now, we're going to move on to our next segment nice and quickly. Uh, we need two contestants to come up here. We don't mind, actually, whether you're um, adults or kids. So we don't mind. Is Sandy down there? Where is she? There you are. Do you mind picking them up for us, Sandy? Whilst that's happening, I'll introduce the segment. There's a little girl... Um, oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that little girl, little boy, down the back there that's put your hand up. We'll get you up for the next one. I can see you there, all right? So we'll get you up for the next one. I'll introduce it. This segment is called You Took the Words Right Out of My Mouth. Do you know who that is? Do you know who that sings that? I've got no idea. No? I took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Must have been when you were kissing me. Is it meatloaf? Is the it? The worst performer they've ever had at the uh, halftime Grand MCG. Um, on Grand Final Day. Uh, boys, nominate who would like to go first for this particular segment. 
Clayton, you did it before, so Max, you're going to... All I'll right. Um, now, you can pass on this if you don't like the particular song that's about to come up. Okay. And I'll explain it as it yeah. goes. If you pass, Clayton's got the chance to steal all three points. Now, all three points work like this. I want you to give me the artist, I want you to give me the title of the song, and I want you to give me the next line in the song. All right. All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you spoken word for each song as it comes up. And then I want you to give me the next line after I've finished that spoken word. Does it all make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. There's four songs each. You're going first. Okay. You'll get your first four songs. Here we go, mate. Here's your lyrics. We have the chance to turn the pages over. We can write what we want to write. We've got to make ends meet before we get much older. We're all someone's daughter. We're all someone's son. How long can we look at each other? Down the barrel of a gun. Hey! All right. You've got it. Now tell me, who is the artist and what's the song? John Farnham. Yes. And the song's You're the Voice. Can I tell a funny story about that? Yeah, of is course. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, we were belting that out in the change rooms once doing weights. And James Frawley gets up and goes, it's obviously we're all someone's daughter or someone's son. He goes, we're on someone's shoulders. <laughs> we're on someone's... So oh, no, it doesn't work. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Taylor? Is that correct? Talia. Talia, Talia. That's, he's got three points, all right? So, no, that's Megan. Oh, that's me and Megan. Yeah. Sorry. All right, OK. It's a little bit confusing up here. All right, here's your next one. No, you've got four. Four okay. in a row. Because um, heaven ain't close in a place like this. I said heaven ain't close in a place like this. Bring it back down. Bring it back down tonight. Never thought I'd let a ru rumour ruin my moonlight. Well, somebody told me you had a boyfriend. You had a girlfriend that I had in February of last year? That's Is that about part right? of it. Mm. Well, it's, it's Mr. Brightside, it, The Killers, isn't it? It's somebody told somebody me. Somebody told me The Killers, sorry. The Killers. Yeah. I'm going to give you two points for that. It's uh, who looked like your girlfriend. Who looked like your girlfriend. Somebody like told me The Killers. That I had in February. Oh, that's, I said that. Yeah, well, that's why I gave you two points. I didn't take it all off you. <laughs> all right. Did you Here's know your, that? No. Nah. You'll be right. Here's your next one. <laughs> Loving you isn't the right thing to do. How can I ever change things that I feel? If I could, maybe I'd give you my world. How can I when you won't take it from me? The next line is... Is that what you're giving me? Um, <laughs> oh, it, it, it's worse when everyone else knows it. <laughs> I'll just pass to make it quick and simple. Do you want to have a go? No idea. Who's got it out there? Anyone? Who? Go your own way. Well done. It is. You can go your own way. Go your own way. There you go. Your last one, mate. Here yep. we go. What if I say I'm not like the others? What if I say I'm just another one of your plays? What if I say I will never surrender? What if I say I'm not like the others? What if I say I'm just another one of your plays? That's it. That's it. That's it. God, I know it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Foo. Yeah, that's bad. Foo Fighters surrender. Yes. I don't know the line though. Um, oh, come on. Sorry, I'm not a big Foo Fighters fan. <laughs> Surrender? Yeah. Is that the line? Uh, Never surrender? The pretender. Oh. All right. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a, uh, I'll give you one point for That's that. That's okay. All, all right. I need is a point to beat Clayton. So. Yeah, all right. So what we finish up with a score of six, is it? All right. Thank you very much. Here comes your four. Good luck, mate. I'm going to give you a heads up. I'm... Horrible with music. We'll see. We need you Bieber, might be, you might Bieber be surprised. And pussycat dolls, and we could be on to something. <laughs> Here we go. You will grow, and until you go, I'll be right there by your side. And even then, whisper the wind, and she will carry up your ride. I hear all the people of the world in one bird's lonely cry. See them trying every way they know how to make their spirit fly. Can't you see him? He's down on the ground. 
He has a broken wing looking all around. I've never heard them lyrics ever. Really? <laughs> so, Max, do you want to go? I had it a couple of times and lost it. Yeah? It's hard because you speak so monotone. It's... Yes, I have to. <laughs> no. No, who else had it? Someone had it. No. Anyone? Ah, oh, Daryl, was it? Was that Daryl? No. That's the way it's gonna be, little oh, girl. You had it said that. That's why it's spoken word. I have to do it that way. I can't just give it away. Yeah, I'll start enough. singing, then everyone will leave. All right. Um, his palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already, mum's spaghetti. He's nervous, You're but on the service... Here. You're rapping. No, I'm trying to just speak in a monotone voice. <laughs> but on the service, he looks calm and ready to drop bombs, but he keeps on forgetting. What he wrote down, the whole crowd goes so loud. The next line is... I was hoping you're going to stop a little bit earlier. Uh, can I say it's Eminem? Yes, that's one point. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you go to the last couple of words? Again? To drop the bombs, but he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud. It's over now. Yes. But what you're doing right now? No. But the words won't come out. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. So we just give him one point for that. He opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking how? Everybody's choking now. The clock's run out. Time Good. Right. All right. Here comes your third one. Well, I don't know why I came here tonight. I got the feeling that something ain't right. I'm so scared in case I fall off my chair, and I'm wondering how I'll get down the stairs. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I just, I just can't. Lyrics just aren't like no. my thing. No. Yeah, there's one thing I'm bad at. It's yeah. music. And no, nothing like that. No. It is stuck in the middle with you. Stuck in the middle with you. Yeah. Uh, just a, a, another point there. Just a point. For the crowd. Yeah, just for the crowd. <laughs> All right? That was for the crowd. Here's your last one, mate. This is your big chance to come home with a storm. Got in a little hometown jam. So they put a rifle in my hand, sent me off to a foreign land to go and kill the yellow man. No, I don't know why. No. No? Anyone? I was born in the USA. Bruce. There you go. And we'll, uh, we'll, do, we'll do one more just to see how you go with this, just, just for argument's sake, all right? Uh, this, is, this is both of you. First one in, all right? What's the score down there anyway? What have we got? Six versus, yeah, two, so don't worry about it. Double All points. Right, let's see how we go here. Um, well, you work to earn a living, but on weekends mm. comes the time. You can do whatever turns you on, get out and clear your mind. Me, I like football, but there's a lot of things around. When you line them up together... Is it up there, Kazali? What's the next line? Me, I like football. <laughs> Me, oh. I like football. I'm always in There's Bali one. when the grand final's on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyone want to shout it out? <laughs> Line them up together. The footy wins hands down. There it is. Uh, six versus two. Hey, That's I'll the get, end of that segment. I got up there because oh. that's good. Huh? You want to have a go? No, I got the title of the song, isn't that? Isn't uh, yeah, that well, all right. I'll so take another point. Seven. Yeah. Seven versus two. <laughs> Aren't we glad we went for that? All right, seven versus two. We have a winner. Max Gorn, it's you. Well done. Thank you. Both for participating and playing. There's the prize pack. That's all yours. Congratulations well done, for Max. doing all of that. Here is yours. Well, we were good. That's for you. And so is that. Very congratulations to both of you. Thank you for playing. Nice to have you here. All right. Very different. Just on behalf of Clayton and myself, we apologise for what we just did. Um, <laughs> that, was a, that was a dismal display. No, 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 no. Knowledge. It's all good. It's all fun and games here. Uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to see uh, how much you have been paying attention about each other. Ooh. All right? So oh, we're going yeah. to do a little segment here. We need two kids to come up and play. Sandy, if you could be so gracious. Uh, the, uh, yes, down the back there. And, and the one, yeah, just here with the, uh, the baseball cap on, the white baseball cap. 
We'll go from there. Great. Come on down the front. I'll introduce it. It's called Knowing Me, Knowing You. Knowing me, knowing you. All right. Um, Brady and Tyler, what's going to happen? You two are going to be keeping score for this one. All right? It's very simple. Everything that uh, we've spoken about tonight, we're going to go through in this little Knowing Me, Knowing You segment. <laughs> what's going to happen, Clayton? I'm going to ask you ten questions about Max. Max is going to decide whether he likes the answer that you give, and if he does, he will get a water point for it. If he doesn't, bad luck. You'll then get your chance when I ask Max those same ten questions about you. If you don't like the answer, you don't have to award the point. You yep. two down the front, you're going to be keeping score for each one that you, they get right. All right? So welcome to the show, Tyler and Brady. Here we go. Our first one. Clayton, how old is Max Gorn? He's 26 turned 27. Max? There's no need for the turning 27, but yes, correct. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is his date of birth, month and year? Ooh. October the 17th. No. Mm. No? Does anyone, does anyone know? Damn. I thought Duxy you'd know. He gave me a cake on my birthday. <laughs> what is it? December 30th. Uh. Once again, it's not about you. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, Duxy. Do you know his middle name? Is it Doug? No, nickname's Doug. Ah. Edward. Edward. All right. No score there either. Um, do you know where he was born, town and state? Melbourne, Frankston. Victoria. Well done. well done. Correct. All right. What is his favourite subject to talk about? Cycling? Yeah, I'd pay that. Yeah? yeah? All right. Cycling it is. Got a point. Do you know what, if anything, annoys him? Uh, when uh, $1.50 favourite on, <laughs> on the horses doesn't win. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. When, um, <laughs> when a dog... <laughs> a dog, a dog uh, does number two on, um, on the grass and the owner doesn't pick it up. Well, they're both, they're both what I said, so <laughs> yes. That's two points. <laughs> Very good. Very nice. All right. Oh, that's good. How many brothers or sisters does he have? Uh, two brothers. Two brothers? 29 and 31. Wow. Very good. Points. Excellent. All right. How many goals has he kicked in his career to date? Um, 49. Ah, oh, who's helping? Shh. Yes, it is 49. Well done. Yeah, he got that. How many games has he played in his career? 96. He got that too. Well done. And your last one, if you had to describe Max's ideal day, what would it consist <laughs> of? Waking up in the morning at 7 o'clock, having a coffee in front of the fire <laughs> on the TV, then going out for brekkie with his mates at 9 o'clock, um, doing a few activities during the day and then putting his head on the... Uh, the couch in the afternoon, having a bit of a rest, and then dinner with his lovely girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> you were going so well until you said dinner with your girlfriend. <laughs> but the morning, the morning thing was spot on. I wake up every morning a little bit earlier than seven, but I have a coffee by the. I turn the fire on and, yep. and watch the cycling from the from the night before. Believe it or not, so okay. um, I'd say give him a point. Point. All right. You got a point. Well done. Uh, so we finished up with a total score of? Nine. Nine. Very good. Wonderful, Clayton. All right. Here we go. The same ten questions to you, Max Gorn. I just learned his name this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see this. Uh, how old is he? He's 21. Turning yep. 22. Does that give me two points? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Correct. Uh, funny about that. What is his date of birth, month and year? Oh, well, it's actually around about now, isn't it? Like in this sort of region. Because you were thinking about having your 21st at the end of the year. So you wouldn't have that if you had it in February. So I'm going to hopefully say August 7. July 22nd. Oh. Mm. What's funny? I missed out by 15 days. <laughs> <laughs> She's loving it. 
Do you know where he was born, town and state? Monash Hospital. That's yeah. in Victoria. Yep, that'll do. Okay. Are you happy yeah, with that? Correct, yeah, definitely. good. Uh, do you know his middle name? Geordie McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> correct. <laughs> He gave it. All right, there you go. What is it? Ah, uh, it's Thomas. Thomas. All right. Um, what is his favourite subject to talk about? Uh, I, I eavesdrop on this one a lot because me and Clayton are really bad warm or apparas. Okay. Um, so we're always at the back of the group and yep. with Christian Salem and they talk FIFA Pro League or Pro Clubs or whatever it is for the whole warm up and it does my <laughs> head in. And they both lie to each other. It's weird. <laughs> Clayton? Two points. Wow. All right. Okay, there you go. Um, do you know what, if anything, annoys him the most in life? Well, it's noise when sleeping, but I don't think you really like sleeping that much to hate that. Um, mm, interesting. Vanders? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. No. He lives with Aaron Vandenberg and Vanders has got a bit of dad about him um, and Clayton's got a bit of really bad son about him. Um, <laughs> So it's, a very, good it's a very interesting relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty I bang on there. See that. Um, how many brothers or sisters does he have? Uh, one brother. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. All right, good. Go with that. How many goals has he kicked in his career to date? Skyrocketed recently. Um, 22. I don't know. 21. Same as his age. Mm. Oh, 21. Well, how to kick that one against. <laughs> <laughs> How many games has he played to date? Uh, 57 comes to my mind, is that right? That would be correct, mate. Yeah. Well done. Uh, score was? What do we got? Seven versus nine. Did you right. have to get nine? Oh. Yeah. Um, this could be worth two points if Clayton likes the answer. If you had to describe Clayton's ideal day, what would it be? Um, wake up at 4pm. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably worth two points already. <laughs> Then have a big, big bowl of spaghetti bolognese <laughs> that he cooked from the night before. Um, microwaved for two and a half minutes because he likes it scorching. Um, he would then most likely turn the Xbox on then, but he wouldn't turn it off for the rest of the day, but that doesn't mean he's playing it. Sorry, PlayStation. That's a big thing in PlayStation it Xbox is. world to get that wrong. Get so I was going to take a point that off. That could have cost me a point. Um, <laughs> He will then play PlayStation and he will come out of his PlayStation room with his headset still on talking to the people while he cooks his spaghetti bolognese for dinner. Yeah. Um, he will then go back into his room, most likely have 70 texts per minute with his girlfriend. <laughs> um, you know one of those people where you can either do the whole text in one text or 50 texts to spread it out? He's the 50. <laughs> um, you'll use a lot of emojis throughout that period and you'll be in bed by... An early time of 3.30. <laughs> <laughs> How'd he go? Spot on. Wow! What well, do you want to award him? One or two points? I'll give him double. Two points. Du two points. So, just for argument's sake, we've got a draw. Yeah, That's breaker. great. Uh, uh, I'll look after you both. Um, but we will go with you first. You can take that prize pack. I'll give a footy to you. I'll give you a beanie. And I'll also give you a merchandise pack because you've both been wonderful ambassadors of the That's Good Footy panel show. Well Thank done, you very buddy. much for playing. Thanks, boys. Look after that set. He'll do it. Wow. All right. What we're going to do now... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I now want to do is just um, thank all of you for coming out tonight. It is a Wednesday night. The boys are playing at the MCG on Friday night. I just wanted to say, boys, congratulations for not only being in the finals... But I wish you all the best on Friday night. I reckon you can really smash Geelong and I think this is a great chance for you guys to progress even further into it. It'd be awesome to see you do so. Um, I also just wanted to say thank you to Sam, who looked after our P-Day tonight. Thank you to Sandy, who's just standing out of shot there, for all the right reasons, I understand. Um, uh, what I wanted to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is just um, explain to you... We do do these shows every Wednesday night. We've done a whole season of them. We've only got three, maybe four shows to go before the end of the season. Um, we'd love you to tell your friends and they can come along and be part of it. If not, we just hope you've had a good time tonight because you've been here with Max Gorn and Clayton Oliver from the Melbourne Football Club. <laughs> Thanks so much for being part of it, boys. Your first time, how'd you go? Yeah, unbelievable. Loved it. Not what you expected? Um, I actually didn't know what to expect. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, awesome we like setup. that. Yeah, good. And Max, how are you with everything? That's no, good. It's an exciting week. 
for the football club. Um, yeah. Just judging by a few of the faces I can see, I don't think many were around for the 1964 grand final. <laughs> there may have been a couple and well, and well, and well done. Um, but it's been a long journey for us and we're not there this weekend just to make up the numbers. We want to make a bit of a statement. So make sure you come Friday night. Well said. Well said, Max. Just to close off on this, on uh, September the 12th, Wednesday, September the 12th, we're doing a Hawthorne show with James Sicily and James Warple live from the Sandown Park Hotel in Noble Park. On September the 19th, we're doing a Collingwood show uh, at the Matthew Flinders Hotel. If you'd like to get tickets or you'd like to know more, get onto the website, www.thatsgoodforfooty.com.au or follow us on Facebook. That's as simple as it gets. Please put your hands together for Max Gorn and Clayton Oliver. I wish you all the best, boys. My name's Damien. We thank you for coming tonight. That's been That's Good for Footy. Cheers and good night. Bye, everyone.